Hi, I'm Bart Baggett with Handwriting at University International. The video series you're about to see is very special. It gives you an opportunity to really get to know some of the people behind the handwriting. So I invite you not only to watch the videos, but take a long moment to look at the handwriting. Analyze what you see. Use everything you've learned in our basic courses and begin to stack trait on trait on trait. I think what you'll find out is there's a huge learning experience in your future. I know as I conducted these interviews, I was also surprised at how certain traits stacked with other traits and things were mitigated. So ask yourself the question, like, if you see a big why, is it imagination? Is it exercise? If their self-esteem is high, was it always that way? What were they like as a child? Would you like to hang out with this person? Would you like to have dinner with this person? What are their political beliefs? All these things attempt to project it. Estimate, what would it be like, huh? I wonder what this person looks like. Is this person friendly? Are they fun? Would I agree with them? Are they angry? And then the other thing is kind of project their past. What happened to them to become that person? And I think you'll find, at least in this series of videos, that everybody we interview, they're charming. They have a warmth about them. They have a kindness about them, despite some of the trials and challenges they had as a child. So take this as a learning experience, kind of an advanced handwriting analysis course for you to really begin to get to know the person behind the handwriting. Enjoy. Is she sweet or mean-spirited? What fears really motivate her? What's her fear? <clears throat> does she follow the rules? And does she follow social protocol? What does social protocol mean? Society. So general rules set by society. Very good. Very good. I'm gonna, I almost want to give you a prize. You're such a good answer. Does she freak out in public when criticized, or does she not freak out when criticized? So first you've got to see if she's even sensitive to be criticized, and then you have to see is there anything inhibiting her from freaking out? Is she sexually selective, or is she promiscuous? What does promiscuous mean? Slutty, right. That's not what she said, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sleeps around, same thing. Sleeps around. Is hygiene important to her? Didn't you learn this in the basic course? It doesn't, just, I just want you to make a guess. Is hygiene important to her? It's a random question that says, here is something in the world that some of my ask, what do you think? I don't know. I think there is a way you might be able to tell but I'm going to leave it up to you to see how creative you are. How important is security and commitment? Now, this is an interesting question. Security and commitment with money or relationships? Describe her closet. What does that mean? What? Wardrobe. wardrobe. Describe her wardrobe. And I want you to give me details. I want you to tell me exactly what her wardrobe looks like. Does she have a defined and strong moral compass? And does she have self-control and self-discipline? Or does somebody come along with a bottle of vodka and say, hey, Jennifer, let's go drinking? Now, why would I, as an interviewer and as a researcher, ask someone to write print and cursive in the process of these interviews? More traits can be seen, right? Many of the people said, Bart, I don't normally write cursive. I normally print. If, those, if that is an accurate statement, which we don't know, but would it be useful to see both? Okay. Is there anything in Jennifer's handwriting that you're seeing in her printing that you don't see in her cursive? What do you notice about her printing right off the bat? I see angles. Baseline is straight. This is totally straight. It's all the middle zone, which is block printing. So what does block printing mean, generally? I mean, it's a masculine quality, right? She, like, gets things done. She's direct. She's, like, she's got a very, it's power, really. I mean, it's an interesting, powerful personality. And then flip to the cursive handwriting. Wow. Ultimate femininity, right? Um, I think believe my friends would describe me. Um, they would say Jennifer is uh, sweet, uh, friendly, um, reliable, 
I think those are some three words that they would use. Uh, Fun-loving, maybe, as are well. Are correct? I hope so. I hope that my friends are correct in how they see me. <laughs> I would like to live up to what they see in me. Um, my greatest strength is compassion. And the reason for that is, uh, I think as, as, a, as a kid, um, just trying to think of, of where it might have stemmed from, uh, my compassion, uh, growing up on the playground and, you know, there's, there's certain kids that have certain reactions and in, in, in situations and I never really wanted to be mean to people. I always wanted to be the nice one and always wanted to be helpful to people. Um, um, I, I think because in, in a lot of ways maybe I'm a people pleaser and as I grew up uh, in high school, one of my most prideful moments uh, was being a counselor, peer counselor. Really enjoyed uh, learning about the psychology of people, what makes them tick, what makes them not tick, and, and really just trying to be a constant optimist. Uh, I, the relationship I have with my parents um, is a great one. As a matter of fact, they're visiting in town uh, this weekend, or this um, I, uh, I have some guilt issues with my parents, I've noticed, um, as I get older and I'm growing up. I, I definitely have an independence from them. I moved out when I was 17 um, and took a lot of pride in that, that, uh, you know, oh, before I was 18, before I was officially an adult, I moved out, went to college, and have been self-sufficient ever since. Um, but I still really turn to them for life advice, uh, emotional support, and, and, and I think there's a little bit in me that is always just kind of asking for their reassurance. You know, mom, hey mom, dad, do you th am I doing the right thing? Uh, w would this be something that I'm, that they would be proud of, you know? But uh, if somebody attacks me or criticizes me on a personal level, if it's a friend or family member or something like that, um, the first thing I would do publicly is probably take it and swallow it. Um, but what I would do is probably consult with either a friend, a relative, or my husband and really tell them how that got under my skin. It um, really would hurt you. It would hurt me, yes. And the defense, some people would react instantly, like cuss at them, but your protocol is not to overreact. My protocol is not to, re -overact, not to overreact with everybody except my husband. He gets the luxury of being overreactive. Yes, my poor husband gets the instant knee-jerk reaction. Which is? Uh, which is hurt, spite, resentment. So if, if, if my husband criticizes me, the knee-jerk reaction is to honestly tell him how I feel instantly, good, bad, or ugly. It's, it's not safe within the relationship just yet. It's something that we both are working on constantly. It's, it's, a, it's something that, that I am struggling with currently and have definitely taken measures to correct it. So let me ask you this. Progress. Yeah. What is the mechanism inside my brain that tells me that I can react to whatever my husband says, that it's safe, and, and not do that with, with someone publicly? God, that's a great question. Um, maybe, the, maybe the fact that like you said, he's safe. He's safe. We've made a commitment to one another um, that we're, we're married, and so therefore, for better or for worse, we're together. So maybe with other people besides my husband, it's not safe because they would judge me. They would, I might lose their friendship, might lose their relationship. And with him, I'm either, either afraid, not, maybe I'm not afraid to lose him, or maybe I know that he would never go.